reveals his presence. He reveals his heart. He reveals his character through our time of worship and our time of praise together. And we unify sometimes even as the Spirit moves by revealing to us a word that he gives to us. We've had a word of encouragement, but oftentimes the Lord also desires to give a word of knowledge. So I'm going to let Stan share what the Lord has put on his heart this morning before we transfer into testimony. Good morning. How many of you have been woken up at 345 in the morning with the Lord speaking to you? Uh-huh. Yeah, well, I got it this morning. Thank you. And then you lay there and say, can I go back to sleep? And you're saying, how long? I have been, um, the Lord spoke to me. I have not heard the word of the Lord now for about three weeks. And I've wondered, why, Lord? You come and say, why, Lord? Because I hear him often, daily, speaking to me one thing or another. So when his voice is silent, you ask yourself, why? You should. (laughs) And he said, Stan, you have mixed loyalties. I said, what do I need to do? He said, you need to go and resign your position of leadership in another church because I had a foot in each camp. I'm not telling you to do that, but I'm just saying that's what he told me. And then he said something else. He said, not only that, but in our lives, in all of our lives, we have possibly two loyalties or more that we serve. We're paying attention to two different directions. And God says, I want you only focused on me. That's what it was this morning. Focused only on him. He wants all of us only. I was yelling at myself. The speaker's behind me. He wants us only focused upon him. Because he needs to be the supreme one in our lives. Focusing everything we do, everything action we take, no matter where we are, we need to be walking that straight line. Did I have sin in my life? That's not the issue. Some may have sin. Some may have things they need to clean up. But the point is, is that I was just had mixed loyalties. I had two different directions I was serving. I was still serving the Lord, but it wasn't one he wanted me to do. And after 11 years, it's hard to go and say, this is my last Sunday. And that's what I had to do before I came here today. So I had to turn my keys in and my badge and the name tags and the radio and say goodbye to friends. I'm not saying goodbye to the friends. I'm saying goodbye to the mixed loyalties. Do you understand what I mean? Praise God. That is his message, even this morning, worshiping him only. Amen. You know, we can decipher that in our hearts and recognize that God calls us to one thing. And he wants our heart to be pure, unified, and directed to him in our focus. And we can all learn from that, that we are not divided in heart, that we're not divided. And God does call people to different seasons in their life and movement, and and you know, so if God desires for change in your life, may we all focus in today, and may we all think of what God himself has commanded us to do. Be obedient above sacrifice. We can sacrifice so much in time. We can sacrifice in so many ways, but in the end, if we're not being obedient to him, then we haven't given him the worship that he deserves. Amen? Today, we're going to start with a testimony. Well, we started with worship, then we went, but... (laughs) Now we're going to move on to a testimony. And I love what God wants to do. So we've had a few testimonies that have really touched my heart. So Christina Simons, if you can come up. I'm looking for you. There she is. All right. Come on up and give your word. Yeah, you can stand up here. All right, give her a hand. Good morning. Good morning. I'm nervous. <laughs> um, Tembi has asked me maybe a few months ago to do this, and I just said no. <laughs> And then I couldn't sleep, and I was convicted, and it wouldn't go away. 
And then she asked me again, so I knew what the answer had to be. My name is Christina Simons, not Simmons. I wouldn't be offended if you got it wrong. Um, I grew up with two sisters and one brother, born in the Philippines. And my mom's from the Philippines. My dad is military, was military um, in the Air Force. So we moved around, and my childhood was very unstable. So that resulted in um, inability to commit to anything, jobs, relationships, friendships, hobbies. I've had a million jobs. I have a million hobbies. God let none of it go to waste. To this day, he is using all of it. Uh, at age 14, I began to rebel. Um, I don't think there's anything that really triggered it besides wanting to fit in with everybody at high school. I wanted to do what everybody else was doing, be cool. And I just, I had that desire to experience everything the world had to offer. You watch too much TV, that happens. Uh, I got lost in sinful behaviors, which eventually led me to alcohol, drugs, sex. Um, at 18 years old, I married my high school sweetheart, who came from a very strong Christian family. They're the ones who led me to the Lord, though I was the seed in stony ground, so I never really grew. I, I knew it, but I still continued in my ways. Life began to spiral out of control to the point I attempted suicide. I felt utterly worthless. I had nothing else to offer the world or anybody. I found myself overdosed on pills, laying on the beach waiting for death to just take me. I begged for God to just not let me wake up. In the attempt, my life was in the pit. I had reached rock bottom and led me to being divorced at 22 years old. And I surrendered my life to him completely. Newly divorced, moving back in with my parents after living a lavish lifestyle. I had an apartment overlooking the San Diego Padres Stadium. I was married into a multi-million dollar or millionaire family. I had everything the world, God granted me everything I wanted. Um, <clears throat> when I moved back in with my parents, I was working at Safeway, making minimum wage, pushing shopping carts in the rain, coming from San Diego to 55 degree rain. It was humbling, but I would whistle. And as I cleaned the bathrooms in Safeway, I would whistle and worship. And I got promoted all the way from cleaning the bathroom to, to running the money for the whole store. Um, because I wasn't rooted in God, I fell away again. And I found myself this time as a cocktail waitress at a casino. I moved in with a man into a, in a relationship that was abusive on both ends. And it's easy for me to want to play the victim and say that I was abused and feel bad for me. But it went both ways. I was not very nice. <laughs> After two years of it, I started going back to church to get right with God, and I changed jobs, changed my diet, changed my hobbies, changed my thought pattern, everything. He, he changed. I asked him to deliver me and set me on a new path. It was at Church of the Living Water I recommitted my life and was baptized, and that's when he began to release the gifts I did not know were in there. With all the changes, my low self-esteem was on its way to healing, and I always hung on to the promise before I really even knew what God was all about, of Joel 2.25, I will restore the years the locust has eaten. And it was a battle of blaming myself. Well, I'm the one that caused it. But he promised that he will restore the years. So I just hung on to that, not understanding it or where it would lead with my dear life. At 26 years old, I met Joe, a very godly man. We've been married for 13 years. This October, we have two kids, Isaac and Natalie, four and 10 years old. My best friend, Olivia, invited me here. God actually gave me a prophetic dream of a tent in the woods before the pandemic that I would be led to a safe place. And then I got this text message six months later that, hey, there's this church in the woods in this tent. <laughs> There was no doubt. I said, that's where I'm supposed to be. So here I am. 
and we look forward to it. My kids love it. They can't wait. They're actually bummed they couldn't be here today, but they're with grandparents. And I just want to close with Romans 5.20. The law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. And it just makes me think that there's no pit too deep. And I got myself into a pit, and he rescued me. And then I dug myself another pit, and he rescued me again. And he does that over and over. So no matter what you've done, he knows, and he still will come and get you. Good morning. It's been a few months since we've had a small group Sunday, um, and I just love that Church in the Woods, it's not about a set program or a set of expectations what church should look like. Is, is it? We love to come out here and encounter Jesus as a community. We want to experience the Holy Spirit every time we gather. So I think that's why we provide this framework, this time where we can break into smaller groups to hear from the Holy Spirit and dwelling in, in, in each of us. We, we have these words we want to share, and this is an opportunity in these small groups to be genuine, authentic, and to connect with one another. If you didn't already know, I work with children for my profession. I love being a um, vice principal of a kindergarten through eighth grade Christian school here in town. And one of my favorite days of the week, <coughs> excuse me, is Wednesday. This is not a traditional year, so we're not gathering all together for chapel, but we do it in our individual classrooms. And it was about a month ago, and I heard the sweetest angelic voices coming out of the first grade classroom. So I decided to tiptoe up to the classroom, open the door, and go in and join them, right? I was hearing these angelic voices. What I saw truly moved me. The Holy Spirit was just in the, some of these kids. Um, some of the children, again, they're only six or seven years old. They were recklessly abandoning themselves to the Lord. They had their hands raised. Their eyes were closed. They weren't thinking about their classmates. They didn't even notice that I had entered the classroom. And then it was just a few weeks ago, I saw a very similar thing out here at Church in the Woods with our own little Anna Switress, Leah and Jamie's daughter. She wasn't by her parents. She was on the edge of the tent during worship. She had her eyes closed, her hands raised. She started to hop up and down. I promise you, it was like she was dancing with the Lord, and no one else was in this tent. There was this connection. And then God wasn't done making an impression on me these past few months with children. I came across a video of our daughter, Karen. She's nine now, and it was five years ago. She, she's only four years old. And this video, she had this extreme passion for God, what she was learning about God and about God's people. And she was in our living room. It's like she's preaching. Um, so I wanted to have you take a look at this quick video. This world that we can have a pick for you, that you are to pick for all of the children that you made. There's none of us that are the same. But our skin is kind of the same. Papa's eyes are the same like mine. Mom's eyes are the same like Papa. All of us are kind of different with our skin because some of our skin, skin is different colors. And when they're in a wheelchair, don't yell for them because, God, we yell you. We never ever was up a statue that we fake. We just was up to you, God. We know how you make our praise and see I love, 
I love what four-year-old Karen said. If you couldn't quite hear what she said, I'm just going to do a snippet. She's like, God, we love you. We never, ever worship a statue that's fake. We just worship you, God. We know how you like our praise. We sing our praise today that nothing can stop it because we were saved by a wonderful price from you, God. That's it. The Holy Spirit's been prompting in me to ask for that same kind of sincere, excited, receptive heart that I see in these kids that God's brought into my life. Matthew 18.3 calls us to become like little children. In this verse, Jesus characterizes our faith and entering into the kingdom of heaven with a simple, helpless, trusting dependence on him. Like children who have no resources of, of their own, they have no acknowledgement or accomplishments or achievements that they offer or commend him. They are humbly reliant on him and they're excited by his invitation. These childlike qualities are what Jesus held up to his disciples as an example in Matthew 18.3. So when I looked at the Aramaic words that Jesus used in Matthew 18, 3, become like little children, it's interesting. There's two Aramaic words for child. The most common is yalad, which means little child or, or small infant. But what's really interesting is that Jesus used the less common word for child in the Aramaic language, tabitha. And it sounds a lot like the Hebrew word, talitha. Both words share a common root word, tela, and it means wounded lamb. So Jesus' use of the word Tabitha become like little Tabitha. It's a beautiful reminder that we're broken, and he wants us to humbly come to him as a broken lamb, as a repentant child, coming to him knowing that only he can fully restore us and heal us. So what's amazing to me is what the Holy Spirit's been teaching me through these kids and through Matthew 18, 3. It's really in alignment with the messages that have been shared here at Church in the Woods the last few months on worship. Genuine worship requires an exposed, sincere, receptive heart, receiving him like a child. So let's briefly look back. In late March, Jim spoke on Palm Sunday about worship, and I love what he said. Worship is less about the expression and it's more about the heart. He referenced Psalm 139, 22 through 24, when David said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Whether we have our hands up or not, or whether we're on our face or not, genuine worship comes from a heart that is postured to God. And Jesus, um, Jim, excuse me, Jim ended his talk and he joked, I may not raise my hand, but I'm a Pentecostal on the inside, and that's good. Then in April, Michael Johnson shared his testimony, and he shared his journey learning the true meaning of worship. In a nutshell, what he said, it's not about us. He learned it's not about um, the feelings or emotion we get. It's not about the doing. He said it's not about the, it's not about the entertainment that it provides. Um, and it's not what anyone else thinks. Genuine worship is about entering in to a personal encounter with our Lord and Savior and doing that with a surrendered heart to him. The Lord delights when we enter into his presence and we're changed. And then also in April, Leah reminded us that it's Christ who's our example how to be vulnerable and authentic. He was rejected by the very people that he created she said, like pulling bark from a tree, being exposed and vulnerable to death, Christ voluntarily exposed himself, all for love. And then she went on to remind us that God desires us to be in relationship with one another, authentic relationships. We are not created to be a lone island. Satan wants us to think we're alone, but God says, no, you're never alone. I will never leave you or forsake you. I've created you to be in community. So I think that's a great reminder today before we break into small groups today. So let me share the questions that we'll be discussing in your groups today, and you'll also receive a hard copy of this. So number one, 
Have you become like little children with a heart that's vulnerable and receptive to the Lord, a trusting dependence on God? Number two, how and when are you able to enter into a personal encounter of worship with Jesus? Number three, do you have authentic relationships in your life or do you often feel alone? And then these last two questions we have, our leadership team at a recent leadership retreat, we've actually been asking God to help us answer these questions. But number four, what excites you about Church in the Woods? What is God doing here? And then number five, what is God's timing? How do we ensure we only step where he leads? After you have a time to meet in groups today, we'd really like you guys to close out in prayer. And you'll know that the time's coming to an end when the worship team comes up and quietly plays in the background. So let me pray before we break into groups today. God, we thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our sins. Thank you for this time to share with one another in our small groups as we each listen to the Holy Spirit. Help us to be compassionate and caring as good listeners as well as authentic and transparent when we share. Help us, God, to have a heart posture that humbly invites you in and holds you in highest esteem. We love you and we commit this time to you. Amen. So go ahead. We serve a great God, do we not? Amen. One day I might be as good as Rachel Brewer, sharing with such fervor. I love it. She does such a good job. You know, as I said, though, uh, I think it was Jim Brewer actually connected this morning, and he's like, the Lord's just showing me that just a moment in my life this week that God did something great. Lauren Shewick, good friend, you know, comes out here, and he feels like the Lord is just putting something on his heart. You know, we are never going to stop what the Spirit wants to do through these moments. So with just a, a minute and a half, two minutes, if, uh, if either one of you brothers want to share... If somebody else has just something quick that they want to share that the Lord has done in their life this week that really is just confidently showing you something that would be for the group of how he teaches us, how he raises us up, how he leads us. That's, uh, we, we all need encouragement. We all need hope. Amen? Amen. I love doing this stuff. I'm not. Um, <laughs> but God told me to do this, that he would be glorified. As I came here today... I sat and I thought, how am I going to share this? Um, some of you guys know I am work in a hospital as a respiratory therapist. There are things that happen in the hospital, um, events that are critical that um, a team is called. It's called a rapid response. And um, a, a whole team of nurses, doctors, therapists, pharmacists, everybody comes there. I came up to this place, and I found this gal violently pounding her head against the, um, in her whole, her whole body. She was squirming inside, pounding, 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 just like it would knock me out, you know? But I sensed in my spirit that this lady is a demon possessed. And I looked in her eyes, and there was an emptiness inside of her eyes. And um, so God said, I will deliver her. Pray. Yeah. And I'm like going, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what am I supposed to do? Just pray. You don't have to go up there. You don't have to lay hands on her. Just pray. <laughs> so I started praying in the spirit and in, inside of me over this, this person. I told my coworker, and um, as I prayed, all of a sudden, she stopped. She stopped, and what she couldn't say before, nobody could get her to answer, nobody could get her to talk, nobody could do anything with her. She, they said, she stopped, and they go, what's your name? And she expressed her name. All of a sudden, Everybody just left. <laughs> it was like, you know, they knew that this gal had been healed, but they didn't know who healed her. So I talked to my friend. He goes, you know what? 
Jesus, he, it seemed like he was always healing people in the Bible. Why doesn't that happen anymore? I'm going, it just did. And God, be the glory. He took her out of that. Everybody's gone. I never heard a peep out of that. We didn't have another code the whole night. Anyway, yeah, God's. So we believe in a victorious God. We believe in one that delivers, that sets free, and makes whole. Would you stand with us? Because it's in his name and his name only. What a wonderful and beautiful name it is. You were the word at the beginning. One with
victory, Lord. Yours is the victory. Yours is the glory. Yours is the power in which we will go in this week recognizing what you have done in our lives. No greater sacrifice could have been given for you or me. No greater sacrifice can be given for you or me, Lord. We focus on you and you alone. Each and every person that has come here today, Lord, has an invitation to accept and to receive and to know who you are. May that invitation be extended to you. If you are in need of hope, if you're in need of encouragement, if you're in need of counsel, wisdom, of how to take the life that you have and exchange it for the glory that is given through the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, would you make that choice today? Would you invite him into your situation that he could be your solution? Today is the day of your salvation. Not tomorrow, not in your own thinking, not in your own action or your work, but divinely by his presence and his work alone. We serve a beautiful Savior. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. How many agree that Jesus is the name that we serve today? We have always ended our service with the Lord's Prayer. And as we do that, we do that in unity, that his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Ever and ever. Amen. If you have need today, we do not want you to leave without knowing that we as a team would love to pray with you and just give counsel where needed, but just give hope. So we love what God is doing. So if you need that, you're welcome to come forward. Say hi to one another. Do not leave without being known and know somebody new. Thank you so much for being here. We look forward to what God's doing, and we'll see you next week.